show you how to play this uh, little melody lick to cough syrup today. First things first, go to the link below and download the tab I made. That's going to help a lot because you need to see where these where these notes all lie into place. While you're there, check out my new book. It's pretty awesome. Um, anyway, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to slow this thing down. I'm going to demonstrate it for you um, and talk about a couple key issues. We're talking about pivot fingers and guide fingers to change between the chords. We're talking about having this melody in the bass line. And this interesting thing he does technically is that he does this whole thing, which is his thumb and his pointer. And when I first heard it, I assumed that the thumb would be doing an alternating bass, kind of like that. Where if you watch the live videos, what's going on is just playing thumb to pointer, right? And in between that, you have the melody going. So it's not an alternating thumb bass. Um, it's just thumb and pointer. And so uh, the idea behind it is the thumb's work is going to do the bass line, which is this. D with the middle finger to A. Down to G. Back to A. That's step one, right? So you, you have that as your placeholder, as your, as your downbeat, okay? Now I'm going to play the pattern for you really slowly. The, the next thing we're going to incorporate in is the melody and what we call the pedal tone. A pedal tone is whenever you play a single note over and over again, kind of as, as a placeholder. Uh, I'll a demonstration is kind of if I did some. If I played a story for you or something like that, the second string open is our pedal tone. It's used a lot in classical music. Um, in this song, we're gonna think, if you think of this as a pedal instead of the bass, I think it'll help. So our, on, on this first quarter, pedal is going to be the fourth string of the fourth fret or F sharp. So I'm going to play this really slowly so you can kind of see what's happening here. Right now I'm going to collapse my pointer finger to get to this B on the third string. It's called a hinge bar where I'm playing. I squish the pointer finger down. I'm not barring the whole thing, I'm hinging that finger down. Very important thing right here is I'm adding my pinky on the C sharp on the third string, which comes to our next idea for the for the day. We're going to use this pinky on C sharp to pivot into the next chord, which is A. Right. So let me demonstrate that for you. So it's going from the second measure into the third. Right. That pinky, not the ring, because if you use your ring, you're going to get in trouble. Um, so make sure as you change from that D to the A, you're using your pinky. Use my middle and my ring. Why do I do that? Because I'm going to need my pointer finger on this B in a second. Now we're going to switch again from where we are right now. We're going to bring our pointer finger back over to this third, right? Another hinge bar, right? So for the A chord, we have, we start here. pointer finger over and our pinky up. Right? We're going to use our ring finger here to guide us in or to pivot us into the G. Right? So we're here. Everything lifts but the ring. That's our pivot finger. Kind of a stretch here on the third string from B, C sharp, D, up to E. Play it for you. Right, then our middle finger comes up. Okay, it's not too hard to play. It really helps if you practice it slowly and if you use this idea of just your thumb and your pointer. I tried learning it by ear first using my thumb alternating and I had a rough time of it. So I watched some live videos and it really helped. I'm going to play it for you through you one more time really slowly just so you can see it and then you'll be on your way, you'll be rocking it. So here it goes.
that's it. Let me know if you have any questions about it. The rest of the song is a piece of cake to play, but it's a nice little melody line. So thanks so much. See you soon.